What's up everybody, welcome back. For today's video, I'm gonna be going over one of the add-on things that I use um, in terms of not only intraday, but also getting ready for plays and what really distinguishes an A-plus setup from setups you know that aren't the best. Um, and that is Unusual Whales. They are running a 15% off sale for Memorial Day. It's the biggest sale they've done in a long time, so if you're interested, definitely a good time to start. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, so the first way that I use this is in preparation. First thing I'm gonna do is go over here to hot chains and tickers, and I'm gonna hide the index in ETF. SPY QQQ, they always have good enough volume, and I'm not really worried as much about flow on those, big, on those uh, indices as I am with just simple price action. Now, when trying to distinguish which tickers are the best or which tickers have big move potential, the first thing I really like to do is look for names um, with high volume OTM contracts that are, are close to expiration. So let's, let's just check out Facebook here. Looking at Facebook, I'm gonna scroll down and look at these calls. So, you know, 527, those expirations, 195 call, that definitely sticks out. These 200s here, um, 63, let's see the closing price on Facebook. So it looks like Facebook closed at about 194. So they're about $6 OTM, nothing crazy, but these 617, 220s definitely stick out very high over here on this bullish premium. Um, in terms of volume and open interest, I'm more worried about volume as that is every single trade that has been liquidated as well. And as a day trader, we need volume. Um, if I'm gonna swing, open interest is one that I'm more worried about, but open interest resets every morning. It doesn't set, reset throughout the day like volume does. So I'd have to check back in the mornings um, to really see if the people held on to those contracts from the day before. So just looking through some hot chains and tickers, that's what I like to look for. These can act as a magnet. Um, and then once I get that, I'll hop over to my chart, but let's look at some other names here. Um, Neo is one that I love to trade. So we're just gonna check this out. Let's see. So these 6315 puts actually do stick out. You know, names that have both sides with pretty good OTM hits, pretty good volume really stick out because we never know which side is going to run. We don't know anything and it helps control that bias being able to play both sides. So Neo puts definitely stick out here and that that's one that I'll check out and use levels to kind of establish whether I want to play that or not. These 17 calls here on the 6.3 also stand out. Um, pretty decent bullish premium, bearish premium here, higher volume on these puts. So it looks like people are trying to roll these over and get an early flush next week. Um, one name that I've been watching pretty closely is BA, just because we have broken out of a downtrend, um, a descending wedge with some pretty good movement. There's some decent volume gaps. So I'm just going to look at BA. So let's see here, 527, 617, 150, certainly stick out. Definitely gonna watch that. Um, other than that, these 63120s are another one. Looks like we see here the bearish premium is lower than the bullish premium. So it looks like people are selling those, which would also be an indicator of a potential upside move. These 63140s also stick out. So BA and NEO are ones that I will definitely look at. Um, in terms of ones that you know maybe not don't stick out as much, let's just take AMD here for example. AMD is currently trading at about 102. So you're looking at this, you know, a bunch of 63102s that are already in the money. 63105, about three dollars, with the premiums 1.49, 1.55 at close. Um, so does that stick out as much as those 150s? No, in my opinion, it does not. And it really based off the range of the stock. Stocks that you know move more, the AMDs, uh, the Teslas of the world, compared to Neos, 
you know, NEO might be $2 OTM, but the ATR is 1.5 or maybe two. So those stick out a little bit more as opposed to UPST is one in particular that has an ATR of probably about eight or nine. Right now, maybe pushing 10 or 12. Um, so ones that are, you know, 10 OTM aren't really crazy out of the money compared to those NEOs um, where that is pretty much out of the money. Now I'm gonna couple that with our levels and I'm looking for VPA gaps. VPA gaps mean that price can move faster. Let's look at BA here, for example. Here on the daily, as you see, you know, we broke out of this descending wedge and we do have nice volume to the upside um, in terms of a VPA gap. Once we are over that 132.65, looks like, you know, we really don't have much to worry about about 139, but 146 is the big level there. We could also fall down. In terms of a day trader, I'm gonna look at this on the hourly. Okay, on the hourly, you know, we have some different levels, a little bit of downside. Um, we could bounce here off 128, but then above 132.55, 132.65, we have nice range on the upside. So BA is one that, in my mind, qualifies as an A plus setup in both directions. Um, one thing I'm gonna look for on the downside is if we can hold that 128.5, then we can push back up. If we can't, it's gonna move a little bit slower, but underneath this low here at about 130.39, we could have a nice flush down to about 128.5. So both, both ways could pay pretty nice. Um, and that's one thing I love to see in both plays. It helps with my bias going in, knowing that both sides could move decently fast. So let's look at NEO as well. NEO here looks like the downside actually will possibly move faster um, once we get under about 15.7. Let's look here on the daily. On the daily, we are meeting a VPA node here at about 17 with the downside a little bit thinner. So the downside could move a little bit slower. I like to see that and that makes sense why those people are taking those 15s. Um, pretty low risk spot to add at the top of this considering we're approaching some pretty heavy resistance. That definitely sticks out. And then let's look, you know, just looking at AMD. One we talked about earlier, we actually are in a decent VPA gap. It looks like about 98 is the downside. Let's check the hourly. The hourly is a little bit, you know, there's some levels that are a bit more choppy. Looks like 103 is going to be a big one than that 104.22. So it could be a bit choppier than those BAs, the NEOs. That's how I distinguish an A-plus setup from just a decent or an okay setup. I want to find flow and I want to find those VPA gaps where price can move faster. Now the second way that I like to use unusual whales is just looking for unusual flow that comes in. In this case, I like to set my my I like to set my premium about 50,000. Um, and the reason being sometimes the smarter big orders will break their orders down into smaller chunks. Um, but also 50,000, not every foo, not every person on Twitter has 50,000 disposable that they're willing to put on one play. 10,000, there are some people out there. So it could just be, you know, maybe someone on Twitter, maybe your favorite foo is loading, right? So I like to use about that 50,000, gives me a happy medium. In terms of the spot range, I have it set 0 to 1.5. Bid ask, all this is on. DTE range, 0 to 14. As a day trader, I like those closer to the to expiration dates. Bid ask spread, 0 to 2. I think that's a preset. Um, and then down here, exclude these deep ITMs and OTMs only. In this case, this is all the flow from any name, right? We can also break this down more. Um, T right here stands out 59k. The OI is greater than volume on 0.13 to 0.14. Um, definitely sticks out. They expire 6.3, so next Friday that definitely sticks out. Um, but ways I can break this down, let's say BA. We're looking at BA, right? I can put this in the search and I can see where the big monies are coming in. In this case, this is already expired. Not worried about that. They're selling this call here, but let's see what they're buying. If I click on this here, I can see every step of a multi-leg multi trade. Um, so in this case, it looks like they're selling the calls. They bought those calls. So they're closing 
it looks like they're selling covered calls here. Um, they bought 125s earlier and they're rolling these up and then selling to hedge their position on calls of these 135s. So that's definitely something, you know, worth noting. But other than that, you know, nothing crazy in terms of this flow here. Let's check NEO. NEO looks like people are buying puts and selling puts for 610 buying these 610s, buying these 6315 puts, which were the ones that kind of stuck out, right? Um, in this case, it looks like we bought 2.7K, OI of 4.4. It's a bearish transaction. 66K was spent on premiums. So that's definitely cool to note. It looks like these have not fully been liquidated yet, these 610, 16 calls. So it's something that sticks out as well. Now, if I really want to get into the big money where the absolutely unusual um, flow is coming in, I'll just throw on 500,000. These are the very big moves. We're going to cancel out NEO and we're just going to look at the, all the flow together. So it looks like ChargePoint has the highest 2.7 million spent on premium. Um, 30,000 size compared to 202 OI. These are the 610, 14 calls, and they were bought at the ask. So that implies a little bit of um, urgency. Let's see what they have here. It looks like they're selling some calls earlier, and now they're buying back in 2.7 million. So this definitely sticks out. And then maybe I'll go and check out charge point, which levels it has, and then I those 14 calls in terms of playing them the next trading day. Now, the last part that I use unusual whales for is having a better understanding of which strikes I'm going to play. Um, in this case, let's, let's go back to Neo. I wanna look at those strikes that are getting hit pretty decent and also base them off levels and what day of the week it is. If you know it's a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, I can get a little bit more OTM and be perfectly comfortable playing those. If it's a Thursday, Friday, usually one, to two OTM is about as far as I'll go. In this case, those 6315s stick out. They're about a dollar and 30 cents out of the money. So let's go back, look at our chart here on NEO. So it looks like NEO. For those to go in the money, you know, we need this under 15.7, um, this area right here. But underneath that looks like a very decent play. So on the downside underneath 15.7, that's where I'll play those 15 puts and be perfectly comfortable, especially as it is a Monday. Looking for the contracts to play, we wanna play contracts, especially as a day trader that have more volume because they allow us to go in and out of trades faster. If we're trading just SPY and Qs, IWM, most of those contracts have enough liquidity that it doesn't matter which contract we play. Um, because there are so many contracts traded each and every day. When it comes to the individual tickers, it's a little bit more dependent. Um, and in, in this case, I'll play those 15 puts on the downside. So on the upside, going to use this. Um, looks like these 6317s are getting hit pretty nice. Decent bid ass spread, pretty low premium. So I'll play those 17s on the upside as well. That's kind of how you know i just use flow i think it is very beneficial to get a better sense of where money is as well as narrowing down our plays to find those big move potential i love a mix of flow vpa and key levels to find those bigger moves i used to miss out on big moves all the time i still miss out on big moves but i found that most of the time when there are bigger movers, they're at least on my watch list. Doesn't mean that I execute them all that well all the time, but at least I had the chance and didn't just sit there thinking, what, you know, why did this move? Most of the time is because flow, VPA, and key levels are broken, which sends us into a bigger move. It could also, in BA's case, be a descending wedge or a pattern breakout.